Greetings, loved ones. Identifying child neglect may seem more difficult than identifying other forms of abuse because neglect usually involves the absence of a certain behavior rather than the presence. A thorough investigation of the child's safety and risk followed by a comprehensive family assessment can help determine what kind of services and supports the family may need. These are important messages, so please help us get them out. Subscribe to our channel, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button and the notification bell, and please share these messages with others. You could save a life. Today we are covering the topic of prevention and intervention in child neglect cases so you can have a clear understanding of the process. It is important for me to be clear here that our jobs are prevention and it is the responsibility of authorities to do the intervention. Your part in intervention is to alert the authorities so they can do their part. So let's talk about investigation and assessment. Identifying child neglect may seem more difficult than identifying other forms of abuse because neglect usually involves the absence of a certain behavior rather than the presence. A thorough investigation of the child's safety and risk followed by a comprehensive family assessment can help determine what kind of services and supports the family may need. You consider the possibility of neglect when the child is frequently absent from school, begs or steals food or money, lacks needed medical or dental care, immunizations or glasses, when the child is consistently dirty and has severe body odor, if the child lacks sufficient clothing for the weather, if the child abuses alcohol or other drugs, and if the child states there is no one at home to provide care. You can consider the possibility of neglect when the parent or other adult care caregiver appears to be indifferent to the child, the adult seems apathetic or depressed, the adult behaves irrationally or in a bizarre manner, or the adult is abusing alcohol or other things. So once it's reported that it's suspected, there's an investigation, and the investigation should determine if neglect occurred and examine the child's safety and risk. Two of the most important factors to consider are, one, whether the child has any unmet cognitive, physical, or emotional needs, and two, whether the child receives adequate supervision. So here are some tips to help assess neglect in families. Gather information from multiple sources, child and parent, self-reports, caseworker and neighbor, neighbor observations. Ensure confidentiality to collect more honest and accurate reports. Use non-judgmental, open-ended questions that encourage diverse viewpoints on the situation. Probe for signs of different types of neglect. Consider context like the child's age, the home environment, and community resources. Note the severity and frequency of neglect incidents and the length of time since the last incident and between multiple incidents. In any moment, you always need to think about the safety of the child. Determining the child's safety is as critical in the decision-making process in case of possible neglect as it is in physical or sexual abuse. Determination should consider threats of danger in the family, the child's vulnerability, and the family's protective capacity. So this is the way we investigate it. We investigate the following key threats of danger. One, no adult in the home routinely performs basic and essential parenting duties and responsibilities. Two, the parent lacks sufficient resources, resources such as food and shelter or parenting knowledge, skills, and motivation to meet the child's basic needs. Three, living arrangements seriously endanger the child's physical health. Four, the parent refuses and or fails to meet the child's needs or arrange care when the child exhibits self-destructive behavior or serious emotional symptoms requiring immediate help, when the child has exceptional needs that can result in severe consequences to the child, and when the child has serious physical injuries or symptoms from abuse. The result of the investigation will inform whether the family requires additional assessment and intervention. A low-risk family may be referred for differential response, while the most severe cases may require placement in out-of-home care, preferably with relatives, to ensure the child's immediate safely while the family is assessed and a safety and service plan is developed. So let's talk about the assessment process. A comprehensive family assessment should help uncover the potential causes of neglect and underlying factors affecting the child's ability to care for the child. 
Because neglected children and their families often face complex issues, it is critical to use a holistic approach that looks at the child, family, and community context to identify strengths and the most effective ways to reduce risks and to engage the family in the assessment process. So he, here's the key purpose of assessments. The key purposes of the assessment are to understand the neglect and its impact on the child and family, to make decisions to plan for the child's safety and connect the family to services, to engage the family in its extended support network and services. Overarching categories for assessing child neglect include the child's cognitive, physical, and emotional needs and capacities, the parent's expectations and parenting abilities, the family's circumstances, attitudes, and behaviors, and the family members' interactions and relationships in and outside the home. So we need to identify and enhance the following protective family factors in at-risk families. Identify nurturing and attachment, knowledge of parenting and child development, parental resilience, social connections, concrete supports for parents, and social and emotional competence of children. The assessment process ultimately informs the level of intervention necessary for the family. Assessment should continue throughout the family's case to ensure progress toward the goals. As a community, we should be available to provide assistance to families at risk in order to prevent child abuse from happening. According to the CDC, over half of all children in the world, as one billion children ages 2 to 17 experience violence every year. The question is not if you will encounter a victim of violence. The question before God is what will you do when you do encounter them. If you're a victim of violence, reach out to someone today. If you find yourself in a dangerous situation, call 911 for help. If you know of a child suffering violence, tell the authorities. In our next episode, we will talk about the prevention and intervention needed in cases of child neglect. Until then, God bless you.